I mean, you know the job well, you studied it. There's always some challenges that rise to the top. What is the, if I can put it this way, high ground that you have to occupy and defend? Well, you know, it's so true. There are many challenges, and I like to believe every day or every year as a mayor of New York is like dog years, you know? <laughs> it's, just, it's just a complete change of mindset. Uh, but, uh, you know, it doesn't feel differently for me. Uh, I have been doing what I'm doing for uh, over 35 years. You know, I took the train when I was a state senator, borough president. I responded to calls of services. I met with community groups. I dealt with crises from the day of being a rookie police officer. And this is just a natural transition for me to continue serving the city. Uh, there are no surprises for me. I've been throughout this entire city. And we've seen a lot of it. We saw you on a city bike. You obviously had the shooting of a police officer. Uh, you also called into 911 about a, an attempted assault going on. So you've already dealt with a lot of that. Let me turn to one thing that's on all, so many people's minds in New York, and that is the school system. You said we need to keep the school system open. It's actually safer for the children to be in school than otherwise. Can you give us a read today on New York City schools, particularly on how many uh, teachers could show up? Because some teachers say they have to stay home because of their kids. And that's understandable. And, you know, let's keep in mind that we may have an increased number now, but every day uh, you have employees who have to stay home for a variety of reasons. It could be that they're sick, they have to stay with their children. Uh, so for so many reasons, we adjust. That's what New York is about. This is a complicated city that deals with many crises, not one at a time, but several at a different time. And how do we show the entire country that New York's response? And so I'm excited about what we did over the last few days. People didn't even realize we delivered 1.5 million masks to every school in this uh, public school system so that when teachers and principals walked into the school, they had the tools, um, the 1.5 million test kits, I'm sorry, they had them there ready for the children immediately. That was seamless. Coordination with the DOE, the police department, my team, and we're going to continue to shift and pivot based on how, how COVID continued to shift and pivot. That's what we're supposed to do as a city. Mr. Mayor, I think that a lot of people don't appreciate how big the New York City school system is. It's over, last time I checked, a million students. It's just huge, much larger than any other school system in the country. You mentioned the 1.5 million tests. That's quite a feat. At the same time, I've seen estimates that say that'll get you through about a week or so. What do you do after that? How do you get more tests? When can you get them? Well, think about this. Let's be smart with our resources. Uh, why not use the tests strategically when you need them? How are we using them? A child is diagnosed with COVID in a classroom. We give that entire classroom to take home test kits so their parents can test them so we can determine if we should close down uh, the school or just the classroom or what we should do um, with that particular facility uh, area. What has happened in the past, you had one diagnosis, we want, to, we want to close the entire school. That just makes no sense. Instead of using our resources in a strategic fashion, the science has shown just because one child has COVID in the classroom, it doesn't mean the entire school or the classroom is infected. We're going to be smarter and we're going to pivot. And most importantly, we're going to defeat COVID. Mayor Adams, give us a sense about the, what the strategy here is, because I can envision two different strategies. One is, let's try to slow down or stop the spread of this disease. Another is, we have to manage through it. As a practical matter, as do we as New Yorkers have to get used to the idea we all may get this? <laughs> you know, you, I could not have said it better. Uh, so here's a strategy that the way I look at it and the way my team, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and others and educators, take my hat off to UFT President Michael Mulgrew and all of these great educators. Uh, these are real heroes on the front line. But we need to realize we can't live our lives through COVID. Every variant comes out, we can't spend another $11 trillion. We spent $11 trillion on COVID. We have to figure out how do we live with COVID. Let's be smarter, social distancing, washing our hands, wearing our masks. When it's needed to do mandates for certain reasons, let's adjust and do so, and then we'll come back around. But this is the new reality that we must face. Our city and school system must open. We must continue to focus. We can't use lose two more years of education for our children. It's hurting them socially, academically, and it also impacts on families. And I'm, I am straight ahead that this city is going to function. We're going to be safe. 
and we're going to stay open. Uh, Mayor Adams, you mentioned where you need to have mandates, you have to go that direction. Tell us about mandates for boosters for city employees. I've heard you say mm, you're thinking about it, you're not quite there yet. Do you have a sense of when you'll have a decision on that? We're looking around April. We're going to do an analysis of, you know, how COVID is moving. Uh, it's a moving target. It's a formidable opponent. Uh, but COVID doesn't realize that New York is a formidable opponent. We are resilient. We're going to do an analysis around April based on the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and see if we're going to mandate them. But that does not take away from my clear message to New Yorkers. Get your booster shots, get vaccinated, do an analysis of the chart. People think, well, okay, I have my vaccine, I won't get COVID. Listen, you may get COVID with the vaccine, but one thing for sure, you're less likely to die and be hospitalized if you are vaccinated and you have a booster shot, particularly for those with comorbidities and pre-existing uh, conditions. And so the vaccine saved your family, it saves you, and it allows our city to open and on a faster pace. And so we're going to look at if we have to mandate it, if we do, we will do it. But right now, we're not there yet. So, so Mary Adams, you mentioned that you have a crystal clear on boosters. You're also crystal clear, the way I've heard you say it, we need to keep going. We can't shut the city down. At the same time, you've got some pretty big players in this city who are not going in that direction at the moment for good and sufficient reason. You've got the big banks, a lot of them say, please stay home. Don't come into the city. Are you talking to some of those businesses and urging them to change their mind and bring the people back? I, I am. I think that's so, your question is so important. Uh, we must get open. And let me tell you why. That accountant from a bank that sits in the office is not only him. It feeds our financial ecosystem. He goes to the cleaners and get his suits uh, clean. He goes down to the restaurant. He brings in a business traveler, which is 70% of our hotel occupancy. He buys a hot dog on the, on, on the street, hoping a vegan hot dog, <laughs> but he <laughs> participates in the economy. You can't run New York City from home. We must have everyone participate in our financial ecosystem to allow the low-skilled, unskilled, and people who are doing uh, the hourly employees to actually be part of our ecosystem. They can't remotely do their job. I need my companies back open and operating. You can't run a city like New York on 30% uh, occupancy and buildings. We need to get back to business and open our city. Mayor Adams, you definitely need the businesses operating again in New York City. You also need a tax base you can rely upon. Uh, on his way out the door, your predecessor proposed some reforms to property tax in New York City. Do you have a position on whether those decisions, those recommendations make sense? Uh, I, I do believe it does. Uh, there's going to be coming out with an official report. Uh, our tax system has been unfair, uh, particularly to communities of color and low-income com communities. We have to equalize that. Uh, property taxes must be fairer in this city. Uh, it was ruled, I take my hat off to Martha Starks, who, were, who was the former uh, commissioner of finance. She was the one that initiated this uh, with Judge Lippman. And I wanted to do an amicus court brief on this because my, my home was impacted by that. Um, so I think it's imperative that we make sure our tax system is fair for homeowners throughout this entire city. Mayor Adams, you'd expect me to ask a question about crime. You know it so well. You were a New York City <laughs> captain of police. Uh, give us a sense of it, and particularly this. Do you have the data? Do you have the dashboard you need to be able to really manage crime in the city at this point? We know about Comstat going back to the Bratton days. Is that current? Do you have an accurate read on how big the problem is right now? Oh, yes, we do. Um, we, we have an amazing uh, crime strategist team. No one does it better than the NYPD. But now we have to move from the computer age of using a uh, ComStat to the artificial intelligent age. Uh, it's imperative in my conversation with the police commissioner. We need to bring on a newer version, bring some of the outside entities and some of the companies that knows, uh, they know how to really and have an evolution of the system. And I'm excited about that. But nothing in technology can take away from the everyday process. We're going to reinstitute a plainclothes anti-gun unit. We're going to do precision police policing. We're going to take down the gangs. You see a shooting, next sentence you read, gang-related. 
We're going to zero in on those communities, but we're going to do something else that has started already. We're going to combine the state, the federal, the city, ATF, the prosecutors. We're all going to come together and go after those small number of New Yorkers who are actually participating in, this, in these violent acts and the gun dealers, the small number who are actually proliferating in our streets with these guns. Some of the violence we've seen has been in the subways. And for those of us who take the subways regularly, it's, it's put some of us off. Where are you on policing the subways and, for that matter, funding the subways? Do you have the funds you need to really upgrade and keep the subways going? Uh, no, we never have enough, uh, particularly with some of the major capital projects, such as the Second Avenue subway and making sure our subways are safe and clean. Here's my plan for dealing with the subways right away. I need my police officers back on the subway trains, walking through the cars, having that omnipresent that's needed. Then let's be proactive. Let's partner our police officers with mental health professionals. Let's train the clerks and other TA employees to identify a person that's on the station or in the station that's acting irrationally and let's proactively give them the services they need and have them off the system because fear is not only actual, but it's perceived. There's a perception that our subway system is not safe. We need to remove that perception by having the presence of police and mental health professionals to make sure those who are on the services are getting the system that they need. Uh, there is no dignity in living on the train, sleeping on the train, or doing violent acts on the train station or on the train car. We're going to turn that around.